Hi, I'm Neil Worthen with the Rural Community Assistance Partnership. And we're here talking about on-site wastewater treatment and disposal systems. Uh, they solve a lot of different problems for a lot of different uses and a lot of different purposes. We're going to be talking about what it takes to operate them, what it takes to maintain them, the advantages of them, and who might need one. On-site wastewater treatment systems are used at schools, small commercial developments, shopping centers, small industrial facilities, perhaps subdivisions where a developer was required to install on-site treatment, any place that is distant from or isolated from a large centralized collection or treatment system, we find these. My name is David Salazar and I am the wastewater operator for the Española Public School District. I have five schools that have small activated sludge plants. There's two designs of plants we have the standard aerobic design, and then we have a new fixed film designed by Orenco. The city septic systems, collection system, doesn't reach far enough, so we have to use small plants. We were connected to septic tanks prior to this and leach fields and stuff, but now because of environmental concerns and practices, we have gone to small, small wastewater plants. Okay, let's get these covers off of here. We're getting these covers off so we can show you what's going on inside there. Up here at the head end, under these four plastic covers, is a big long cylindrical fiberglass tank that serves as a primary clarifier. It also serves as preliminary treatment. So anything that can settle will settle. Anything that can float will float. Since solids build up in this primary tank, it has to be pumped out on a regular basis. Whatever's left over from primary flows into this basin, and you can see the air rotor turning. There's two processes going on here. The gray, shaggy biomass that's on those drums is the fixed film, and that's a certain kind of bacteria. And then there's also an activated sludge process, which is that brown mixed liquor that those rotors are turning in. And what's happening is as that rotor turns, it picks up the mixed liquor, and as it slowly rotates, when it gets above water, it spills that mixed liquor out and it aerates this top section. And then when the drums empty, they're full of air, they're full of oxygen, and then they submerge again on this end. They take that oxygen back down to the bottom of the tank and they slowly bubble that oxygen up through the mixed liquor. We've got the clarified primary sewage coming into the head end of the plant here. The level of the aeration basin is slowly rising and eventually the level will equalize and we'll start seeing clear effluent spilling over the weirs down at the other end. This is the main control panel for this wastewater plant. It's a Hawk SC100. If the oxygen level in the DO drops below one part per million, which is one milligram per liter, it'll start speeding up the air rotor and it starts increasing the speed. Thus, the speed increase will uh, introduce more motion so the, the, the rotors turns faster that's what keeps your protozoa and your aerobic bacteria alive. Otherwise, if you do not have any dissolved oxygen in there, it starts to go septic. And what I mean by septic, it means it dies out. In the summertime, when there is no students, I have to add dog food to keep these plants alive because I don't have that BOD, which is food, which is the waste coming in to keep these plants alive. So I have to add dog food to kind of uh, keep, as, as a supplement to keep the bugs alive. Another type of on-site treatment system is an activated sludge process. There can be sequencing batch reactors, which is another type of activated sludge process where all the treatment and clarification takes place in one tank. Small trickling filter type on-site systems, rotating biological contactors. Some of these on-site systems are a hybrid that utilize two or three different types of these processes in one package unit. Underneath the ground, under these circular covers, is sort of the first step in the process. 
You might call it primary treatment, but it's a combination of primary and preliminary treatment because there's basically just a 20,000 gallon baffled tank. Anything that can settle out of the raw sewage will settle. Anything that can float, like oils, oils and greases, will float. Any kind of trash can be separated out. The primary step has to be maintained. It can be pumped out with a pump truck every six months to a year to remove any accumulated solids. And then it flows over to the secondary process. So what we've got here is a recirculating biofilter. This is just one type of, a, of an on-site treatment system. Uh, you've got some little sprinklers that are rotating above a uh, pleated fabric, kind of a membrane. You can see there is a nice brown biomass. Those are actually the bugs that are doing the treatment, stripping out the nitrogen. Over in this other side, we've got the recirculation going on. Uh, this is how the system keeps itself healthy, keeps this fabric moist even when there's no flow coming in as it is constantly going around and around. These on-site treatment systems are a little bit more sensitive than a large regional treatment system. Uh, since the population of biomass is fairly small at these systems, they can be poisoned by chemicals that might be improperly discharged into the sewer, things like cleaners, pesticides, herbicides, household chemicals. Uh, industrial solvents can knock these smaller systems offline. Also in a situation such as a school where you have a high level of nutrients coming in during the school year when school's in session and then school lets out during the summer and the nutrient load drops to almost zero, sometimes the operator will have to put these on a recirculation mode to keep the biomass that's here healthy or perhaps even add an additional carbon source over the summer such as dog food or some other source of nutrients. What we have here is a flow measurement station. There's a little partial flume and a little uh, electrosonic transducer down in the bottom of this pit. This is where the outgoing flow is measured, the treated wastewater leaving the plant, flowing out to the leach field. So after the fully treated effluent leaves the on-site facility, it flows under pressure to a leach field just a series of perforated pipes with a gravel backfill. This is where that effluent is returned to the environment. In this case, uh, returned into the ground. There are monitoring wells around this leach field to make certain that nothing harmful, no excess nitrogen uh, can enter the water table. On-site wastewater treatment and disposal systems. Compact, fairly easy to operate, energy efficient, they can solve a lot of different problems for any kind of a wastewater treatment application that is located away from a centralized collection and treatment system. For Rural Community Assistance Partnership, I'm Neil Worthen.